What's up guys, it's your boy Don Alabi here again with another awesome tutorial. This is Ghana Near Photography. Today I'll take you to another high-end skin retouching, focusing on beauty bridal retouching. These awesome images were created with um, a makeup artist called The Creamy Bar. I'll add her Instagram handle in the description so you can check her out. She does amazing makeup for brides and other people. Now I shot these images using natural light, or do I say available light? No reflector, nothing, it's just um, the sun. It was an overcast day. So the weather was good for me. I used my 70 to 200 and the Nikon D750 for this shoot. Now, as you can see from the exit down here, I zoomed in all the way to 200 with an f-stop of 3.5. I used aperture priority. So if you notice, the shutter speed keeps changing from scene to scene. Then I saw 400 because I didn't want the shutter speed to slow down. Usually when I'm shooting aperture priority outdoors, I increase my ISO just so I don't get a slow shutter speed. You know, sometimes when you use aperture priority and you your ISO is down, it, it tries to compensate for that by automatically going to a slower shutter speed. I never want that, so I always increase my so now these images are all awesome and I don't even know which of them to pick. I wish you guys were here with me to help me select which one to use for this tutorial but then I'll randomly pick one so we can use for that. I think I'll go with this one. So these images have been raw processed already. If you don't know how to raw process. I have a couple of videos on how to raw process in Capture One so you can check them out. Now let's look at the before and after of this image. This is before. We have a couple of greens on her face because the reflection because of the reflection from the green leaves. So we corrected that over here. And then if you look at this and that the highlights over her robe have been cleared and then some, you know, things on her face and if you look at her hair with brightened it and it added some contrast to it. In general, we've added some contrast to the whole image, cleared some highlight, we've recovered some highlights and a couple of things. So if you look on the left here, see my white balance, the exposure added contrast to it. Uh, my high dynamic range, this is what I did here. And then if you come here, the Luma range, uh, the Luma, I added, I did a, an S curve over here. So we'll export this image to Photoshop and begin our retouching. All right, we are in Photoshop now. Now I have a, another video on how to export images from Capture One to Photoshop and then back to Capture One. I'll add it in the description so you can check it out. So as usual, the first things we, I do in Photoshop is blemish remover. I have a video on that also. So I just create a new empty layer and then with my spot healing brush, I start taking off blemishes one after the other. Well, in my first um, attempt, I don't remove everything. I just take out visible ones because after or during frequency separation, I do take off some other blemishes, the not so visible ones. That was quite fast because we don't have many blemishes on this particular image. So we'll go straight to frequency separation. Now I make use of the array panel a lot, not because there is any magic there, but just because it makes my workflow faster. I can create my own frequency separation action, but once it's already here, I don't see the need to have my, but then I'll have another video where I show you how to create your own frequency separation over here, I make use of the mixer brush. Now, I have lots of videos on how to do these individual stuff. That's why with um, these full retouching videos, I don't go much into details because I have other videos that explain them into detail. So do well to check them out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, this would be a good time for you to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our uploads. 
Now we will start with frequency separation. So I like to zoom out, look at the image and then see where I will need to blend in. Then I come back, mostly I stay at 25%, sometimes 16.6, .6. it depends for you. Now I use an external Samsung monitor, a 27 inch Samsung monitor, which is huge. So I get to see everything larger. If I were to be using my MacBook Pro, uh, 15 inch, it would have been a different um, percentage for me. So don't just look at what I am using and think you should also use same. No, look at your situation, see what works for you, and then you know, create your workflow. So the main aim for my frequency separation is to blend in the highlights and the shadows not to just smoothen the, the whole image no so if you look at this place the i don't know what they call it i think the contour and over here there is a big difference so we'll try blending it in we'll do the rest with uh, macro dodge and brand but for now we just want to blend in all right so our first um, layer of frequency separation has been done let's take a look at before and after. So you see we haven't done anything um, too strange. See we are within limits. So I think I left uh, a bit of her forehead off. So let me just take care of that here. All right that has been taken care of. Um, somewhere here I see a huge transition. Great we are here. Now let's zoom in to 100% and see if we can see more blemishes. Um, I think I see just uh, a couple more blemishes here. So I'll go to the high frequency layer, move to my clone stamp, and then use Alt, press and hold Alt, and then sample a clean area, and then just brush over the blemish a couple of times. I'm using uh, a flow of 5% with an opacity of 100%. I prefer using a flow instead of opacity just look out for what works for you and use it you don't necessarily have to use what i use i've used this a couple of times and it's worked for me that's why i'm using it so find your flow find your rhythm that's what matters all right so i think this looks good here so we'll go ahead and do some dodge and burn. So as same, I use the dodge and burn from the array panel. I always delete this when I'm doing corrective dodge and burn. Now I have my check layer. I am thinking of giving this out if this video should get um, 500 views. Yes. When this video gets 500 views i would create another tutorial and give away my inverse check layer action so what i do is i go through this the levels and i work on it based on how contrasted the image is so with this i won't explain this in this video because some of you might get um, confused i have another video where i explain much into details and then also I'll be creating another video where I will explain much much more into details because it's a bit confusing using the inverse check layer so over here I zoom it to 100% I see a couple of blemishes which you guys may not understand so I'll go ahead and clear it using my micro dodge and burn so with that I use just the brush tool at a flow of 3% and if we look at this image over here like this we see these dark places those dark places because it's inverted you see them as white ones so if you want to clear this dark image we need to dodge them so that's why we are on the dodge layer over here see so because if we were to be dodging on the normal um, dodge and burn layer, we'll be brightening that part. 
so once it's inverted you see we are it looks like we are darkening those parts rather but in essence we are brightening them if we invert the layer back so don't be confused i'll have another tutorial on how to do that but for now just follow through all right so let me just disable that and then try and get rid of this um, dark sides i'm not taking everything away totally i'm just trying to get those parts to blend in somebody might use frequency separation to do these just that frequency separation will make it look a bit fake that's why i use uh, global dodge and burn for that but then hey if that makes your image look nice if it gives you the results you're looking for Please go ahead and do that. It's all about finding your flow and what works for you. I know a couple of people who don't even use micro dodge and burn. They are retouching and they get awesome results. So just find what works for you and use it. So this is where we have that steep um, gradient. I'm trying to fix it here. If you zoom out, you see that yeah it's it's blending in nicely so let's disable the dodge and burn layer and see see this is before and this is after see we've done a couple of things now i want to fix this knuckle over here it's not good to take everything away so i'll just um, tone the blacks down a bit just so they can be pleasing to the eyes Okay, so this is our first layer of um, dodge and burn, which we are okay with. Awesome. So we'll go to the second layer, which is the global dodge and burn. So as usual, I disable the visual aid. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. So with global dodge and burn, I use a flow of 2%. And then as you guys are already aware, global dodge and burn is just sculpting making bright places brighter and dark places darker so with that you make use of your bracket open or close to increase or decrease the size of your brush that's the shortcut so we don't have much to do just um, adding highlights to where there are highlights and then shadows to where there are shadows so now you move to the burn and then burn the shadow zones just to sculpt the image so we come over here and then do something like this same over here these dark places the eyebrows we just darken them a bit no these are normal features of uh, model here so i'm just trying to bring them out just to make the image much more pleasing to the eye the original image already looks good we are just trying to enhance it a bit so let's zoom out and see okay this is cool let's save it then do a quick before and after let me zoom in so this is after this is before and after so let's do a quick um, recap. So this is how we brought our image in from Photoshop. First thing is um, blemish removal. Then we move to frequency separation. Then the next thing was micro dodge and burn. And then global dodge and burn. Now this is our image over here. This looks very good so we'll go to capture one and then see what we can do in there we are back in capture one so let's look at the two images side by side on the left is the raw image and on the right is the tiff version see we have tiff and then the nef so let's um zoom in a bit to 25 percent we do the same here 25 percent and then look at them side by side so you see we we haven't tried transforming the image we only enhanced it a bit so if you look at the two images it's just 
know, a couple of things that we've done to enhance it. Your images don't have to necessarily look way different from their, their original self. That's if you should write. You won't have to do much about that. So with this, we can decide to color grade. Let's go here. And then I have a couple of presets that I've done. So these, we can apply any. I don't feel like doing that. Or I have these ones where we can you know, go through. This is Greenify. So you see the yellowish green we just made it pure green something like this is flattering to the eye or something like this um well this is somehow fantasy well somebody might want this no this is not good or somebody might go for something like this the good thing in capture one is you can apply this as a new layer and then um, work on the opacity. So I think I would like this particular one. Now you guys should let me know in the comment section if you want me to share these uh, presets, these styles. If you want me to share them, let me know so I can just uh, export them and then let you guys have them. So I applied this to a new layer. Once we come here, see it appears. So if we disable it, this is what we have in here. So we can reduce the opacity or if we like it like that. See, just I like it. A bit dim so this is um, 80 percent so let's look at our before and after these are our two images on the left is the raw image on the right is the retouched image so let's take a look at this before see this is before this is after before and after don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video if it has been helpful to you. I hope this has been informative to you and I would like to thank you for watching.